Welcome to Skillcap's Assassination Rogue Starter Guide. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how Assassination Rogues are shaping up in Dragonflight by analyzing what's new and how their play style has changed. We'll then cover what the best Rogue racials are before taking a deep dive into the recommended core talent builds for both the Rogue and Assassination Trees. We'll also be covering which PvP talents you should be taking and when, and after that we'll go over how you should be gearing, including what your stat priority is, what pieces of gear you should be looking to pick up, and how you should gem and enchant them. We'll then finish up with a breakdown of the most important rogue macros. By following along closely, you'll learn how to correctly build your character and give yourself the best chance to get a head start on everyone else. And while this guy does a great job of getting you started, you're missing out big time if you're not already a member over at our platform, Skillcapped. We work with the absolute best players possible to give you all the information you need to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight. We worked alongside Nesper, a multi-rank 1 rogue in Arena and a recent AWC Great Push competitor. With his expertise, we developed an entire rogue damage course that covers all the fundamentals, including how to get huge damage rolling in the opener, and how to keep pressure rolling by never running out of energy. It didn't stop there though, as we even developed videos for our new Master in Minutes series that teach you some advanced tricks and tips that you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to know how to bully other melee, and if you're curious as to why it's sometimes better to invent them with 4 combo points instead of 5, then you need to check out our binge-worthy courses. This alongside our comprehensive crowd control and survival guides, it's a no-brainer to join Skillcapped this expansion if you want to be light years ahead of everyone else who doesn't have access to our courses. We're also super excited to announce our brand new article site for Dragonflight where you can find a written version of this guide. In the article, we've conveniently provided the export link for you to import the talent build we cover in this guide. We also have all the macros listed for you to easily copy and create in-game. We'll be keeping the article updated throughout the expansion with the most recent talents and everything else that the best players in the world are using. So be sure to visit the link in the description, bookmark it, and check back often to keep yourself up to date with the most recent build. Alright, let's get back to the video. To kick things off, let's discuss how assassination rogues are looking in Dragonflight by starting with what's new. The most immediate thing you should notice is that Vendetta is now missing, but not to worry because taking its place is Deathmark. It's hard to say whether this is technically better, but one thing's for certain. Deathmark has way more depth than Vendetta. Assassination also has some sweet new abilities available from both talent trees, including Thistle T, giving us energy on demand and a temporary mastery boost. And on the other tree, we get Dragon Tempered Blades, allowing us to equip four poisons at once. So what does this mean for your playstyle? Well, Depending on what covenant you played in Shadowlands, it's either changed a lot or hasn't changed at all. That's because Assassination has lost its ability to one-shot with Sepsis. In fact, as we'll cover in our talent section, we won't be playing with Sepsis at all. Instead, Assassination has been returned more to its roots as a spec that focuses on dealing massive bleed damage, sometimes even spread across multiple targets. This gives it a more Necrolore type of feel. This is echoed with the removal of Vendetta and the addition of Deathmark. The damage of Deathmark depends on how well you set up your damage multiple globals prior. If you don't set up your damage properly, you don't score kills. At its core, this means its damage rotation is maintenance heavy. You get rewarded for maintaining your bleeds, both while doing sustained damage and while bursting. If you do your job right, your damage will ramp high enough to become borderline unhealable. So forget about one-shotty sepsis gimmicks. Assassination in Dragonflight is all about rewarding you for doing multiple things right over a long period of time. Next up, we'll go over the best races for Rogue, starting with the best overall. This title belongs to Night Elf. By now, you're probably familiar with the flexibility of Shadow Meld. It's a massively nuanced cooldown, and for Assassination Rogues, it's almost mandatory. This is because of Vanish, which is both your best defensive cooldown and one of your best offensive cooldowns. This presents a dilemma. How can I use one thing that is so good for something else? 
Well, that's why Shadow Meld is so good, because it acts as a pseudo vanish, giving you a defensive option when needed, and giving you all the damage benefits of being in stealth, like massively buffed Garotes and Master Assassin for extra crit chance. When you vanish or Shadow Meld stealth, you get enormous offensive benefits. Trailing behind Night Elf are dwarves of all things, both normal and dark iron. This includes a bit of class envy, as the dwarf racials remove bleeds, making them perfect for dealing with other assassination rogues, but also feral druids and even arms warriors. So if you only care about being tankier, dwarf is a safe secondary option. The drop-off at this point is quite steep, but any familiar races, even orc, are still really good options. Undead might wind up being quite strong, seeing as Will of the Forsaken has new value with the addition of Evoker whose CC can be removed with the Undead Racial. Now let's talk about talents, and there's quite a lot to talk about given the huge revamp to the talent system in Dragonflight. The way we're going to explain how to choose your talents is by starting off with what we're calling your core build before adding on your optional talents, both in the Rogue and Assassination Trees. We'll begin with the core Rogue talents. These are the ones you'll be using in the overwhelming amount of games. Here we have our standard loadout for the rogue talents, and you'll want to always consider picking up every talent we've highlighted in green. There are some dual talent options in here, so let's cover some of our selections. One of our goals when selecting talents is to pick up Marked for Death for its ability to speed up our rotation, providing us with more burst or control. To get this, we follow the path down from the middle of the tree, where one of our choices is between Elusiveness and Cheat Death. For most matchups, Elusiveness will be our standard pick as it provides us with on-demand damage reduction. With that said, Cheat Death is an alternative choice specifically into Windwalker Monks and Subtlety Rogues since their burst damage is disproportionately higher, making Cheat Death a form of life insurance. Our core build also includes Thistle Tea. This ability will allow us to deal more burst damage while also providing more value to the mastery stat, since it means we don't necessarily need haste for energy regeneration. Because of this, we'll always follow the left side of the tree, including picking up fleet-footed, since the passive movement speed will enhance our entire toolkit. Now let's circle back and cover some of our optional talents, because at this point you might have some questions. For one, Sutterfuge is entirely optional. The reason for this is a talent on the assassination tree called Improved Garrote, which allows us to use Garrote for 3 seconds out of stealth anyway, which means that Sutterfuge only allows us to cheap shot multiple targets out of stealth, which is not nearly as common when playing assassination. And since we want Shadow Step, we can choose between Shadow Runner or Blackjack. For our core build, we'll go with Blackjack since its healing reduction stacks with Wound Poison or Hematoxin allowing us to get huge pressure after we blind or sap a healer. We've also selected both Improved Wound Poison and Numbing Poison as optional, despite the fact that we're using them in our core build. This is because we'll be playing with Dragon Tempered Blades on the Rogue Tree, allowing us to apply four poisons. But if you wanted to play with Kingsbane, or if you prefer more damage over the additional healing reduction, then you could drop these talents. You could also play with Echoing Reprimand and resounding clarity for a more burst-focused build, but that would require you to drop some sustained damage talents like Lethality. There are also some additional tank talents like Recuperator, which you can budget points into, but again, that would likely come with some damage loss. Finally, towards the middle of the tree, you can safely drop deadened nerves against any team that lacks a physical DPS. But again, here we have a complete picture of the core rogue talents, Next, let's look at the core build of your assassination tree. Again, you'll want to pick every talent we've highlighted in green, with the most noteworthy picks being Venomous Wounds. This is literally core for dealing sustained damage, and playing without it will leave you energy starved. Cut to the Chase is also central to our damage, and playing with this talent is a huge DPS gain if you do your rotation properly. We cover how to maximize these passives in our sustained damage course, so be sure to check it out after this. We'll also want to play with Improved Garrowed. This gives us huge momentum out of stealth and allows us to snowball damage much faster. Moving down the tree, we're obviously going to pick up Deathmark, since it's our primary damage cooldown. And as an in-cap talent, we've gone with Dragon Tempered Blades. Having the ability to apply Numbing Poison essentially for free is a massive benefit in Arena, 
and that's not even considering the added damage bonus from double lethal poisons. And with that said, Kingsbane is a perfectly viable choice in Arena, especially in 2v2 when combined with the passive talent above it. Together, these give you microbursts every minute which become deadly in deep dampening. On the right side of the tree, we'll be wanting to pick up Serrated Bone Spike. This gives us an efficient combo point generator that's usable from range. Since we'll need to kite quite a bit in Arena, this means we'll never really want to play without it. Now though, let's circle around and go through the optional talents. We really don't have that many flexible points. For now, we've made Exsanguinate optional. Don't get us wrong, this is a powerful ability damage-wise, but with a 3-minute cooldown and the fact that it's on the GCD, it can feel a bit awkward to press and doesn't really fit well into our damage profile as a sustained DPS spec. To get this, you could easily budget the remaining point out of elaborate planning. Then, along our way to pick up Dragon Temper Blades, we have the choice between Amplifying Poison or Twist the Knife. Unless we're playing with Kingsbane, we'll play with Amplifying Poison in our core build since it provides some of the highest poison damage on application, while also giving us a damage modifier on Invenom that can be duplicated by Deathmark. This leaves us with our core build for Assassination Rogue in Season 1. The focus on this build is to maximize sustained damage through poisons and bleeds, while having some bursty talents sprinkled in. Moving on, let's take a look at what your best PvP talents are. The only talent that's almost mandatory is Hematoxin. This gives you huge pressure due to the massive undispellable healing reduction and allows you to play with other damage-focused poisons, though this can be a bit redundant with improved wound poison. The remaining slots are relatively situational, but let's start with two good general options. First up, Smoke Bomb. If you've been PvPing for a while, then this should be pretty obvious. This ability gives you an added threat on setups, and can be used to force PvP trinkets or punish enemy targets who have no options for avoiding your stun setups. Maneuverability is another great general talent choice. As an assassination rogue, there will be times when we need to kite or close a gap, and this talent just makes our mobility more consistent. As a final general option, we have Death From Above. This is a few different abilities in one. Not only is it decent damage, but it also provides temporary CC immunity while it's active. And it can even be an optional gap closer against highly evasive targets like mages, monks, and druids. The only real situational talent we have is Dismantle, which is a hard lock into most melee comps. Having this additional CC tool is important defensively due to its ability to negate melee damage during cooldowns. In any case, if you want to have a general loadout, we recommend Hematoxin, Smoke Bomb, and Maneuverability. These will be good in every context, no matter what. Prioritize replacing Maneuverability first when selecting other talents. Next up, we're going to be covering gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our class course, it's only available at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage rotation and bursting guides, alongside our defensive play and crowd control courses which were designed by some of the best WoW players in the world. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating gain guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today. Now it's time to cover your stat priority and how you should be gearing. Starting with your stat priority, you'll want as much versatility as you can, even going past the 30% soft cap whenever possible. From here, mastery is actually now your next best stat, since mathematically it provides the biggest DPS increase. In the past, we wanted haste due to its interaction with venomous wounds, giving us more energy generation. But with the addition of dashing scoundrel, energy generation is less of an issue, making it preferable to go with mastery. After getting as much versatility and mastery as we can, we'll then want haste or critical strike. Both are good for feeding us energy, but if you want your gameplay to feel a little bit more fluid, lean towards haste. And while you can initially gear up through multiple sources, you'll eventually land on a full set of 424 Conquest gear. The only exceptions include the use of one crafted 424 item level boots, which reduce incoming CC by 5%, which you'll absolutely need to use since our biggest weakness is still dying in stuns. You could also substitute your offhand conquest dagger and other off pieces for items offered through world PvP. These will have lower item levels, but can allow you to get as much mastery as possible. You also have the option of converting PvP gear into tier pieces. 
You should do this for the 4 set bonus. It'll give us a stacking damage bonus to our bleeds, and since that's our primary source of damage, that represents a lot of throughput. For trinkets, you should always play with medallions since you need the ability to break stuns on demand. After this, you should default to Insignia for its raw damage increase. Again, Haste is one of our best stats, so we like having more of it. That being said, you could choose the BM Trinket as a defensive pick. If you find yourself dying over and over to one specific comp, this is a free defensive cooldown and can even scale the healing done by Crimson Vial. Moving into Gems and Enchants. This one's pretty straightforward, so let's break it down. As versatility is your best secondary stat, you'll want to both gem and enchant this where it's possible. You'll be using a tiered medallion setting to get gem slots in your neck, which you'll fill with the highest quality agility and versatility gems that you can get. You'll also want to enchant your rings with versatility. Next, there's a handful of speed enchants you can get which go on your bracers, cloak, and boots. These are all great because they stack with your fleet-footed talent, giving you increased passive movement speed. Because of this, we also want the Accelerated Agility Chest Enchant, since mobility is king. As for your legs, you'll want to get the Fierce Armor Kit. And for your weapons, we recommend a mix of Sophic Devotion for the raw damage increase with Wafting Devotion for the increased energy regeneration. The final section we'll be going through is Macros, which you'll find useful as a rogue in PvP. First is the iconic Rogue Sap Macro. This is quite useful in various aspects of PvP, especially Arena against other stealth classes. By spamming this in stealth, you have the option to quickly sap enemy players out of their invisibility. Secondly, you'll want a stealth macro. This one simply allows you to spam your stealth keybind without instantly canceling your invisibility. If you're playing Night Elf, you can make a similar macro for Shadow Meld. Whenever this is pressed, you'll Shadow Meld and then immediately stealth which will essentially turn your meld into a pseudo-vanish. Next, we'll need a lot of focus macros. At the bare minimum, we'll want ones for Blind, Cheap Shot, Garrote, Gouge, Kick, Kidney Shot, Poison Knife, Sap, Shadow Step, and Shiv. Alternatively, you could mix in some Arena 1-2-3 macros with any of these spells, but Arena 1-2-3 work best with ranged abilities, which mostly includes Blind. But you can also do the same for Sap, which will be important for your blind Sap combo, or simply as an alternative to the Sap macro before for getting specific players out of stealth. If you're playing with Tricks of the Trade, you'll also want Party 1-2 macros for this ability. Alright guys, that's it for this one. As a reminder, don't forget to visit and bookmark the written version of this guide linked in the description that we'll be keeping updated throughout the expansion over on our brand new article site. And if you're looking to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight, head over to skillcap.com right now and check out our premium courses risk-free. That's right, we're the only service that dares to literally guarantee at least 400 rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next one.